Hey, what's going on everybody? Before we get to the video, I just want to say a huge thank you and give a shout out to the members of the channel. We've got Dark Python 25, The Overseer 91, Lorenzo Sacedo, and moving on to the next level, we've got the one and only mediocre Milton himself, Rusino, and then finally wrapping it up, we've got Lee Fleming, Wes T, Tyler Seaman, and John Paul Riddenbaugh. If you guys want to become a member, make sure you hit that join button on our homepage or just jump into a stream so we can welcome you into the family. All right, thanks everybody. Now let's get to the video. Hey friends, how's it going? So Grounded's had a few updates so far. We had the Koi Pond, the Shroom and Doom, the Hot and Hazy, which has probably been the best one so far. But we're on the cusp of the Into the Wood update being released here in a few days. And it's been probably the most divisive and, um, I guess, interesting update that we've had so far in the game because of how much they've done and how much they haven't done. So a lot of people have uh, provided feedback to get some of these things changed, changed in the public test. But I want to just touch on about 12 different things that are kind of small in scale, but actually big once you look into them. So let's get into it. The first thing right here is going to be starting a new game and taking a look at these custom game settings. Now these are only going to be available when you do start a new game. So if you do have a game that you're already pretty, fur, pretty far in right now, these are not going to apply to you. So right here, you're going to choose your mode. You're going to go down to custom right here and then customize. These are all the different options that they have added into the Into the Wood update. Play it your way and customize the setting to your liking. So obviously you can pick your difficulty, mild, normal, and woe, woe mode, sorry. Uh, all recipes unlocked and free. Now these are just going to be turn on and turn off, a lot of them. There's no uh, in-between or anything like that. So you can see here, all of recipes unlocked and free. Bug spawn, yes or no. Bugs ignore players, yes or no. Building integrity. Quests on or off. Player damage. Friendly fire. Pet invincibility. Hunger, thirst, drain, stamina, drain, equipment durability, food spoiling, menus, pause, game, and backpack items on death, which you can have drop pack bath. Drop backpack, respawn with you, or lose forever. So this allows you to customize the game to make it a little bit easier, or go crazy with it. You can do woe mode, drop your backpack, lose contents forever, and stuff like that. So that's one of the cool things. It's something little quality of life-wise, but it really allows you to customize and play to your own style. So with showing that, let's go ahead and get into number 11. That's going to be number 12 right there. We're going to count down to number 1. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into my game, and we'll start with number 11. All right, so we're in here in my game now, and number 11 is going to be something simple, but it's actually something really useful for multiplayer. I know we haven't had multiplayer be very successful yet, but a lot of people still do play it. And one of the things you can do here is bring up your map, and you can place a waypoint. So it's super useful if one of your friends is uh, really far away, or if you discover something and maybe you're not ready for it yet, but you want to come back to it, you can bring up your map right here and just press R to place a waypoint. So what that's going to do is when you're running around and everything, if you have to go back to your base for resources or something like that, you can go ahead and bring up your map and it's going to show that waypoint that you have right there. Super useful. And when you're done, go ahead and hit R to remove it. So that's one thing right there. That's number 11. Number 10, I brought us right over here to the field station because I wanted to show you right here. You see the little uh, radar up on top of the field station. Number 10 is going to be the resource surveyor. So before in field stations, you saw your resource analyzer. Right over here, it looks like a little radio. That's going to be our resource surveyor. Now this thing is unlocked once you hit flip the switch in the hedge lab. Spoiler alert if you haven't done that yet, if you're new to the game. But there's going to be something there. You flip that switch, and what that's going to do, every resource that you've already found in the game, you're going to be able to bring up on the map here and search for it through the resource surveyor. So if I want to look for resources from an insect or look for... Um, something for upgrading my weapons or just something to help building then you can go ahead and bring it up right here and scroll down through your list and find anything on the map and what it's going to do it's going to show you where these uh, where these items can be found so let's just bring something up here let's go with grub hides let's go ahead and do that now you're going to hit space to survey and you're going to see right here red is everything on here and the little orange squares so the red is going to be the top level that, that's kind of the depth right there so red it looks like it's at the at the top level orange is going to be a little bit lower into the ground so you can see right here this is all the grub look this is all the locations right here where, where we're going to be able to find grub hides and you just exit and it sticks with you while you're running around so you bring up your map it's going to show you all the locations as you scanned it where the grub hides are going to be Super useful for new players, especially when you're starting out and you don't remember where you found a resource or something. You can do that, and it's just uh, going to make it a little bit easier on where you're trying to go to find those things. And when you're done right here and you don't want all this stuff back on the map, you can go ahead and click right here to turn it off, and boom. Now you've got your map back. So super useful right there. Let's go ahead and get into number nine. 
All right, so we're in my base right here, and we're looking at three of the uh, grinders that are <clears throat> unlocked when you go through the haze lab. I believe you're going to unlock the oven and the grinder, the recipes from the haze chip. Um, so what these do now, typically you would just throw some uh, plant fiber or something in there for plant slurry, or you throw some mushrooms in there for mushroom slurry. And typically for the um, mushroom bricks for building and stuff like that, that's the only reason you really use it. Now what they have is the ability to throw weed stems in there to get plant fiber. You can throw grass planks in there. You can throw eelgrass strand, clover leaf, and sprigs. Some of these were already in here that you could use to uh, make the plant slurry, but the weed stems and the grass planks are definitely new. So that's super useful. So when you're building a house or a base or something like that, and you've got a bunch of extra grass planks laying around. So instead of just throwing them out of the way, which I used to do, you can bring them here, throw them in your plant grinder, or uh, throw them in the grinder, and you can get plant fiber out of them. That saves you a lot of time from going around and finding plant fiber to make your crude ropes and everything. So you can see here, we already threw one weed stem in there. It's going to give you eight plant fiber. The grass planks are going to give you five. And then you can see right here too as well, the eelgrass strand, clover leaf, and sprigs with three, two, and one right here. So you throw them in there, they grind up real quick, and now you basically have an unlimited amount of plant fiber for your crude ropes and everything. All right, so grinders are done. Let's check out number eight. All right, so number eight is going to be another little quality of life change that actually has a really big impact on uh, what a lot of the players have been providing feedback about. Now, I think there's still a little bit of work we need to do with inventory management and stuff like that, but this is super, uh, super useful for when you're coming back from adventuring or something like that. You've got a backpack full of resources and you got to sit there and go through each chest and go, okay, this is where my bug parts are. This is where my pl grass planks or uh, plant fiber and stuff like that is. What they have now, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to be a, uh, a hot deposit button, basically. So when you go up to your chest, and you want to throw stuff in there, it's going to go ahead and take everything out of your backpack that is in that chest and automatically deposit it. So let's show you guys how it's done. So we've got a bunch of random stuff right here, right? So you see down here at the bottom, we have open, hot deposit, relocate, recycle, and copy. So we're going to hold E for the hot deposit. And it's going to show you on the left there. So we deposited 25 plant fiber because that's a chest where I have all my plant fibers. Now let's keep checking it out. Oh, what do we have here? This is where I keep my lance and stuff like that. Uh, my fuzz, so let's go ahead and uh, hot deposit. Oh, we have four four crow feather pieces we just deposited. We go here, hot deposit, 25 pellet, 21 spiky burr. Oh, we've got 22 sap, 13 stink bug parts, 15 bee fuzz, nothing in there, 25 spider fangs. So this way, instead of actually opening your chest and moving stuff in there, you can literally just walk up there, hold E down or whatever the button is, and hot deposit it. Now, the only caveat to that is you are going to have to go in there and rearrange your stuff. So like me, I'm a little OCD, so I try to line everything up. So it's not going to sit there and put it right how you want it, but it will it will take everything in your bag that's similar to the stuff in that chest and throw it in there. Yeah. This is where my ant stuff is. I don't have any other ant mandibles in there, so it's telling me there's no matching items. No matching items. All right, so that's number eight. Let's check out number seven. All right, so number seven is going to be mutations. We didn't get any new mutations in this update, uh, but we did get some changes. More importantly, Blade Master right here and Javelin here. Now, Blade Master, what it used to do um, was able allowed you to repair your weapons when it procced. So we don't know the proc percentages still, which is unfortunate. But you use Blade Master on, especially if you're running around with the Antlion Greatsword, it would never deteriorate. Basically, you could just keep this on, and you would never have to repair your sword. So what they've done now. And we'll touch on this later for uh, each combo attack that you're doing. It, when this procs, it's going to have a better chance of reduce, or it's going to have a chance to reduce stamina uh, cost on each um, successful attack after that. So still useful. And obviously, we did know this one was going to get nerfed a little bit because never having to repair your weapons or your swords rather was going to be a little overpowered. Now, Javelinier, what Javelinier used to do, it used to slow down your enemies, which really didn't make a lot of sense if you're fighting them face to face they're not really going to need to be slowed and you're not really throwing your spears because i think if you've played this game for any amount of time you kind of know what happens sometimes when you throw your weapons so what it does now is it's going to decrease the damage resist of the insects so when you're sitting there stabbing them with the spear it's when this procs again we don't know the percentage of the proc but when it hits it's going to lower their damage resistance against um everything i'm assuming so super useful now that uh, they've done these little changes like that so again, maybe something to look at. Maybe you were turned off about using spears and now you have a chance to use them again. Been some changes to the armor. More importantly, the spider armor, the bee armor, and the antlion armor. 
Now for the spider and antline armor, they used to be light armor. Those have been upgraded to medium armor. Don't know why. Maybe people were using them too much. But we can see here, now they're medium armor. They still have the same um, individual bonuses for each piece. And the set bonus is still Hunter's Prowess. But it's up to medium armor. And the defense, I believe, went from... I think the defense went from like 2.5 to 3 here. I don't remember what it was before. but So the, it did get a little boost in defense, making it uh, more in line with medium armor. And you still have the same set bonuses and individual pieces. The antline armor still has the same uh, bonuses as well. So we can see this. You still have the sizzle protection, and then you're still going to have the uh, the quick draw set bonus. And the defense got bumped up to four. Now the B armor actually got moved from medium to light armor, and it took a little hit, a little bit of a hit on the defense too. But it still has the same set piece bonuses and the set bonus for the the whole set itself. So little bit changes like that, but it is going to affect the way you go, the way you play going forward. Because I was a proponent of using antlion and spider armor because they were light, so you wouldn't have to take that extra time for your stamina to um, regenerate. So little things like this, like I said, little things, but they're going to have a big impact on the way you go playing the game. All right, so those are done. This has been a little bit of a hot topic between players. Now, if you're like me, you like to try to make stuff realistic. So I always use the grass stairs, acorn stairs, or something like that, using the scaffolds to get up to a high place. What a lot of people have done, and this might hurt your feelings if you were one of those people, is uh, they changed the triangle walls here and made them to where you cannot just run up them or walk on them anymore. A lot of people were using these because they were a cheap resource to use to uh, get up to a higher area, and now you can't. Now you're just going to slide right off. So it doesn't really affect me, but it is going to be a, uh, something that affects some players once, you, once the update comes out. If you're one of the people that use these triangle walls to get up to high places, you're going to have to figure out something else. Or especially if you've already got them as part of your base or something like that, you're going to have to do a complete alteration to your base here. Now the regular walls you can still walk on and stand on. And they uh, they changed this back because part of it, they actually changed all walls you couldn't stand on. But some of the people were saying that, you know, when you're building a house, you, you kind of walk on the walls around them to build up. So you can stand on the regular walls, but your triangle walls are no more. So those walls done. Let's jump to meals. Now, when these came out, the Hot and Hazy update, a lot of people, myself included, kind of just shied away from them. I used them uh, for the assistant manager, I think, and I used them for the broodmother be just because of the buffs. But they were very just kind of use when you're going out for one specific reason, you know, to fight something difficult, whether it be a wolf spider, the broodmother, or the assistant manager, antlions, or something like that. The meals now, we do have two new meals. They're going to be Termite Delight, which is going to increase your rock and grass harvesting speed. Don't know why you need that. And the Black Ox Burger, which is one of my new favorite meals right now because it gives you max health and damage resist, which is super useful once you encounter some of the insects that are up here in this new area. But what you're going to see is that these are relatively easy to make, and I'm pretty sure they changed the spoil time on these. They don't run out as quickly. But what I've done, you're going to have a lot of resources if you're preparing for this update like I recommended. So use some of those resources to make yourself some of these meals that are going to give you the buffs just when you're going out and encountering these new insects. Whether it's going into the termite den or finding uh, a new infected friend that's roaming the uh, backyard in some areas. So I recommend now using some of these meals with all the other stuff going on, the bigger stuff. The meals are going to be pretty key when you are going out to fight some of those stuff. So just one recommendation right there. We've got our peepers on and we're looking at the Weed Killer 420 gas tank. Now, Hot and Hazy gave us the option to plug this and basically eliminate all the haze around the haze area. But what it did was allow the infection to spread. So you saw infected insects all over the backyard now. And also what that did was introduced burrweeds to the backyard. Now, burrweeds before, when you cut them down, they would just give you weed stems, nothing special. But now you're going to have another um, decision to make when you're plugging the haze or not. So what it does now is those burr weeds actually drop some spiky uh, parts that allow you to build um, burr floors. So we'll go take a look at that and show you guys what those look like. We don't have burr walls or anything else like that right now, but we do have the burr floors. And you can see what they look like right here. So we've got a little bit. Let's just bring it up here. So you can see the burr floors right here. They do have a different uh, aesthetic look to them, which are pretty nice in my opinion. I'm probably going to plan to use them, but the spiky burrs that come from the burr weeds now are used in conjunction with the lint rope to build those. So not only that, there's one other thing that I kind of want to show you guys that's going to happen if you plug the haze. Let's go take a look. All right, so the other option for plugging the haze is uh, going to be introducing a new infected friend, like I said. And we're over here in this area. Now, this is in the new uh, Into the Wood update area. 
But there's also one of these guys somewhere else, and I'm going to let you guys find it. You can see it right there. Let's go into photo mode and take a look at this. We now have the infected wolf spiders. So if you plug the haze, you're going to be able to craft those burr floors. But you're also going to have to deal with these guys. So you can see just how disgusting and terrifying these things are. And I will let you know that they're going to hit hard and they're going to hit fast. So just a reason to uh, maybe think twice before you plug that haze. All right, let's get on to the next one as we wind it down here. Okay, so hitting number two on our list is going to be the new combo system. Now, before when you attacked, your, your weapon just did a base damage and you had a possibility of crit chancing if you're using coup de grass or uh, one of the, if you're using the stinger spear or using one of the meals that provides you a crit chance. So it would just be like your first attack would be 100, your second would be 100, your third would be 100. Well, now they've changed that to where you have a three hit combo with the first doing half the damage of the base attack. So if your base attack is 100, now your first attack is going to do half of that. So now your half your first attack is 50, your second is 100, and then your third one is going to be 150. Now this is going to this divides a lot of the people right now with how this works because odds are some of the times when you're battling some of these insects, you might not uh, hit that third hit with for uh, the max damage or the uh, the plus 50% damage. So it's very different right now. All the weapons are going to be like this, so be very careful about what weapons you choose and you're going to have to get a little bit creative if you want to do more damage. Now rolling down to number one, like I said, these are a lot of little things that actually have a big impact coming out of this end of the wood update. And number one is probably the biggest hot topic right now, but we're going to have to roll with it. So let's get to it. All right, so we're here at the smithing station and number one is going to be the upgradable weapons. The process in which you do it is uh, going to be different. So there are two new levels now. Hot and hazy, we were given the uh, ability to upgrade our weapons to level seven. Now we have upgrade to level eight and nine, but there's a huge difference right now. You can see here we've got uh, 0, 1, 2, all the way up to level 8 right here, Spider Fang Daggers. So I wanted to show that because you know the basic um, upgrade costs right now. So it's going to be 2 Quartzite to level 1, it's going to be 4, then 8, and then it doubles all the way up. Up so over here, 16 to 32 Quartzite Shards, and then once we hit level 5, that's where we're going to need the Quartzite Globs. So the Quartzite Glob cost is, uh, I think they've lowered it a little bit, Quartzite, so now it's going to be 8 Quartzite per Quartzite Glob, but it's going to be 5, and they've also changed the damage and durability enhancements as well. So we get to level 6, which you guys have probably already done, level 6 and level 7. Now to do from level 7 to level 8, you see this right here, we're going to re be required jewels. Jewels are going to come from a certain insect that is a little difficult to catch, not too terrible if you're uh, good with your bow. Just a little hint there. So to upgrade to level 8, you see the damage and durability only going up by 5% now. So it's lowering it down, and I'm guessing at level 10, we're probably going to get to 50%, and that's going to be the max. So you see level 7 to level 8 there, and now we go from level 8 to level 9, is going to be 10%, or 10 spicy jewels, rather, and still that 5%. So once we hit level 10, you're probably looking at plus 50% on both of these, whichever path you choose. So that's number 1 right there. That's going to be the biggest hot topic right there. Once you jump into the end of the wood update... Hopefully you've done enough resource gathering to where you can just upgrade some of these right now. They're not all necessary, but if you're like me, you kind of want to have the highest tier weapons with the highest damage you uh, possibly can right now. So again, that's 12 things right now that just might be little additions to the game with this update, but they're actually going to have a huge impact on your play style and what you do in the game. So that's all we got for this video, guys. Like, comment, and share with your friends. Let me know what you guys think. Do you like these changes? Are you against these changes? And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. So take care of yourself, take care of each other, and stay original, my friends. Later.